All right, so moving over to the MLB realignment. I mean, the MLB trading deadline. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> folks, um, those of you that, that, that like trading and a lot of it, um, if you would like to see your favorite uh, pro pro league look totally different after two, three weeks, hey, this year MLB trade deadline was for you. Every team, all teams, I'm talking the Yankees, the Red Sox, I'm talking the Dodgers, I'm talking the Mets, Phillies, Braves, Astro, you name it, every team in the league felt like they got new players. Um, so it's, it's a lot going on in MLB. I'm going to turn it over to our MLB expert analyst, you know, uh, Jay. So with that said, Jay, t- give us the noodles and caboodles and also – Give us your your most surprising trade of all this. Surprising trade. Right. I'm going to skip that one, and I'm going to go straight to the most impactful trade, if you don't mind, the one that kind of – if I had to pick one trade that I thought was the, um, the just biggest and boldest, the Los Angeles Dodgers, I, I swear that this, I'm, getting, I'm getting a little annoyed with this team. Um, they went out to Washington – and got uh, Max Scherzer, who we know, you know, this guy's just been one of, one of the best pitchers in baseball for like about a decade now. Uh, 37 years of age, uh, helped the Nationals win a World Series a few years ago. Uh, but not only did they just get Max Scherzer a front of the line, a starter, uh, they, got a, they got a building block for the future in, uh, you know, the, the young shortstop Trey Turner, which I just found to be you know, when I saw when I saw Max Scherzer trade, I'm like, okay, well, that's one thing. And then I thought, wait, they got Trey Turner too? Oh my lord. Okay. Well, so um, they did. Now they did give up their first and second best prospect. Uh, the Nationals get those, them in return. But for right now, you know, I, I think one of the things that I'm looking at with this, we kind of we touched a little bit on the, the legal troubles of uh, Trevor Bauer lately. So I don't know if, if maybe that's kind of the reason the Dodgers felt like they had to make a move, but I'm I'm telling you, you know, assuming Trevor Bauer is going to pitch again this year, they got four number one starters in Max Scherzer, Trevor Bauer, Clayton Kershaw and Walker Bueller. So that's just, and in a playoff, in a playoff series, you're only going four. you're not going a a full five man rotation generally. So uh, I thought that the Dodgers, that was, they also acquired Danny Duffy from, uh, the Kansas City Royals, so that's another starting quality arm that they have. They, they, I don't anticipate he'll probably be used a whole lot unless you know Trevor Bauer is out for an extended period. Uh, but I thought the Dodgers. I mean, that was the that was the biggest move that I saw. Uh, they did lose, you know, their top two prospects, but I mean, obviously they're looking to win right now, and uh, you know they should be they should be set up set up very well for a big stretch run, even though. San Francisco, the Giants have led that division really much from uh, wire to wire as of right now. And the Giants, Giants were not super active in this trade deadline, but they went out and they got Chris Bryant from the uh, Chicago, uh, Chicago Cubs. Kind of a big deal because Chicago, they don't have, they don't have a lot of star power. You know, they've been kind of, to me, like they're kind of a, a no-name squad. You know, they, they still got Buster Posey, their, their catcher, who was, you know, part of three World World Series championships early on in the, in the 2011, 13, and 15, I believe. Uh, but, you know, they, they kind of been carried by, you know, their great starting pitching this season. And I think they could, uh, this was a good move for them to get a little bit more juice uh, offensively. So I really thought, um, you know, that addition, and they, that, that also happened pretty late in the deadline. That was one of the, uh, one of the last deals, I believe, that got done. So good for them um, to do that. You know, other things I'm looking at, the Yankees, you know, Obviously, they're the American League equivalent of the Dodgers. They got the biggest p- payroll in the American League, um, and they, you know, obviously they got they got a lot of big offensive names already on the roster. But they came through. Um, they got Anthony Rizzo from the Chicago Cubs. They got Joey Gallo from the Texas Rangers. Those are big, two big power bats um, for them. Uh, and obviously, their lineup is is, is kind of needed a little bit more balance to it. Most of their big uh, big hitters, including Aaron Judge. And Giancarlo Stanton, you know, they hit from the right side of the plate. They also got Andrew Heaney from the uh, Los Angeles Angels, try to help that rotation a little bit more. Um, so I think they made out to uh, they made out okay. 
Um, but uh, I, w- I wouldn't necessarily d- thought they had a great deadline, but they, they did do some things that should help them. The Red Sox, you know, the obviously the, the rival of the Yankees in the American League East, they got they got a big bat um, from the Washington Nationals and Kyle Schwarber, who had a, just a blistering month of June. I think he hit about 15 home runs in, in June. Um, so he's a guy that can help them from the left side of the plate. And when you look at what they have now with uh, Xander Bogars, J.D. Martinez, uh, Rafael Devers, and Kyle Schwarber, I mean, that's a that's a group of four that's that might be the best the best uh, group of four hitters in baseball. The the White Sox they added another big bullpen arm. Uh, they get Craig Kimbrell from the Chicago Cubs uh, coming over to pair him with Liam Hendricks could be one of the, could be perhaps the best one two punch out of any bullpen in baseball. And really the White Sox, you know, I'm looking at them. There should probably be no excuse that they win that division. They're up by nine games right now. Um, the second place team in that division, Cleveland, kind of had a they had a little bit of a mini fire sale. They're uh, they're a 500 team right now, but they kind of look like they're punting on the season. They traded uh, outfielder Eddie Rosario. They also traded their second baseman Cesar Hernandez. He goes to the White Sox. He's had a pretty decent season as far as a power perspective. I think he's got 18 home runs right now. So that should help them as well. Um, the Astros don't want to leave them out. They've been one of the best teams in baseball uh, this season. Uh, their bullpen's been a bit leaky. Uh, they're able to go out and plug up some of those holes. They get three three good arms. They get Kendall Grayman from the Seattle Mariners. Uh, his ERA, it's about less than one. So that's pretty pretty outstanding. So you pair him with Ryan Presley, and you like what they have there. But they also went out. They get Yimi Garcia from uh, Miami. They get Phil uh, Matone from Cleveland, and, and they sent Miles Straw back to Cleveland. So they lose a little bit of speed there. They'll have to figure out what they want to do in uh, center field. But I think that was a net gain. The Oakland Athletics, uh, they had a pretty solid deadline. They they looked like they went more offense. Their offense, you know, outside of Matt Olson, they've been kind of, you know, they've been kind of less than below average. Hasn't been great. Matt Chapman's had a difficult year at third base swinging the bat. Um, so you go out, you get the catcher, Jan Gomes from Washington. You also get Josh Harrison from Washington. And the biggest acquisition was from Miami the outfielder, Starlin Marte. So him and uh, Ramon Laureano, that's a good one-two punch in the outfield. You like that. Atlanta, the, the, so the, the National League East is interesting because the New York Mets have a pretty pretty solid lead right now. Well, they're up three and a half games. That's that's a division that's probably, you know, there's, there's no great team right now. The Mets are 54 and 48. They're the only team above 500. But you have Philly three and a half back, Atlanta four back. And both of those teams, the Phillies and Braves, made some made some buying moves. Atlanta is, you know, they lost Ronald Acuna, their superstar outfielder, to a season-ending knee injury, I believe. But and they went out and they got four new outfielders. You got Jock Peterson, Eddie Rosario, Adam Duvall, and uh, Jorge Soler, and they also get Richard Rodriguez from uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates. So they went big. Um, All of those guys in the outfield that I mentioned, they got they got big bats. They can all hit the ball out of the ballpark. So that should be fun to watch. See how they, uh, you know, align them defensively. The New York Mets. uh, We talked about Rich Hill and that deal with the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. We talked about that a little bit last week, Uh, but they get another piece of that Chicago Cubs infield and Javier Baez. Kind of interesting because they had they, they signed Francisco Lindor to that big, big contract in the offseason, but he has not been very good. Uh, he's also out with an oblique injury right now, and I think they plan on sliding him over to second base. But either way, that's a uh, that should be a s- exciting uh, middle infield combination. Phillies, I-, I didn't love what they did. They did get Kyle Gibson and Ian Kennedy uh, from the Texas Rangers. That should that should help their pitching staff just a bit. But uh, I know G- I know Gibson's had a great year, and Kennedy's been good. But uh, I I don't I don't like Kyle Gibson down the stretch. I, I, I think he's having, you know, he's having his probably his best season ever, but I, I'd be surprised if that continues. And uh, I, I just don't, I don't like Philly down the stretch and also the Freddie Galvez move. I mean, that's nice, but that's not going to, I don't think that's going to really uh, turn the dial all that much. The Brewers made one big move to get um, the beef up the offense. They get the switch hitting power bat from Arizona at Gordo Escobar. Uh, uh, Milwaukee has been just powered by their pitching staff starters and bullpen the entire year they they did need a little bit more juice in the batting order they get that with Escobar I like that uh another team another team that went out and made some moves was the uh St. Louis Cardinals the Cardinals are you know kind of trying to kind of get in that wild card spot um they get John Lester and they get J-Hap two left-handed starting arms 
both of them are, you know, they're, they're elder statesmen, they're veterans, they know how to pitch, but I, I don't think that's going to move the needle all that much. And I also don't think, you know, Cincinnati, Cincinnati's second place in the National League Central right now. I, I didn't love uh, what they did. They get three bullpen arms, Luis Sessa, Justin Wilson, Michael Gibbons, but it just kind of, it's got the feeling of like you just, you know, you got some spaghetti and you just throw it at the wall and you see what stick. I, I, di I didn't love it. Uh, I, I did leave out one team out in that National League West. I talked about the uh, Giants and the Padres. Uh, both those teams, I like what they did. The Padres, they, they made some under the radar moves. You know, they get the, the all-star second baseman from Pittsburgh, Adam Frazier. He's leading the National League in hits, I believe. So you like that. Uh, Jake Marisny, he can help their outfield defense. And uh, Daniel Hudson, good arm out the bullpen uh, from the Washington Nationals. So, um, you know, those are the teams that I kind of see them as buyers. Um, and we'll, we'll see we'll see how they all do moving forward. Uh, one, te uh, one, more team, one more team I left out. The Blue Jays, they get a closer from uh, Washington. They get Brad Hand, helps the bullpen. And Jose Barrios, he's a guy who, you know, can be probably your number two starter. So I, I think the Blue Jays did an above average job. That's a tough division when you got New York, the Yankees, you got Boston Red Sox and Tampa Bay, but give Toronto credit. Uh, they're, they're, they're very much in the thick of this thing right now, currently sitting um, in the fourth spot in the American League East, definitely in the wild card position. Uh, so um, I, I think I asked you the question earlier and I think it's an inappropriate question. Um, I think I got a better way to ask that question. The question is, who didn't do enough? What, what team just sat back, didn't do anything, and you like, that's not it? You, you, what are you doing? Do you have a team that meets that requirement? Hey, are you talking about as far as the buyers? Right. Yeah, uh, I, I, I do want to say before I answer that, this is – and obviously there's a lot of material in there that I just covered rapid fire, just listing off a bunch of names quickly, what they, what they did and all this. This is, I think in any sport, I don't think I remember any trade deadline being this busy. So, and so there's a lot of, lot of stuff going on, but I've had, if I had to pick a team who probably could have, I, I didn't love necessarily. I know I briefly, you know, covered a little bit about what I didn't love. I think it's the, um, I think it's probably the Na the National League East teams. Uh, I don't know if I really loved any of any of those teams. The Mets are in control right now. They the biggest Rich Hill, Javier Baez. That that's that's not bad. I, I like that. I think uh, you know the Phillies and the Braves. I didn't necessarily love what they did. The Braves just kind of went out like, oh my gosh, we don't have Ryan Acuna. They'll just send in the outfield. Get every outfielder you can find, and they got four of them. I mean, you can only put three on the field at, at the same time, so. Um, surely they can, you know, get a combination. I also think like from a defensive perspective, I'm looking at this and I'm saying all of these guys, I feel like they're corner outfielders. I don't see necessarily a guy who I want in the middle in center field who can just, you know, make the highlight defensive plays and kind of, you know, run that outfield for you. So I didn't, I didn't love what they did. And like I said, with the Philadelphia Phillies, um, I mean, Kyle Gibson, Ian Kennedy, Freddie Galvez. I mean, it's just like, uh, it's almost like they looked around and said, look, well, guys, everybody else doing something. We should probably, we should probably put a few moves together. Um, so I, I, I didn't love it. I didn't love, I didn't love what they did. I, and I thought, um, you know, I talked about Kyle Schwarber for Boston. Um, they also picked up Hansel Robles from the, uh, the Minnesota Twins to get a little bit more help from the bullpen. Uh, I th that was good. I, I will say I probably maybe expected Boston to be a little bit more active because typically at the trading deadline, the Yankees and the Red Sox are kind of always two teams that are kind of like, you know, just battling for a position, um, trying to get a leg up on one or the other. So Boston, I, I maybe in retrospect expected Boston to do a little bit more, but I also, you also got to keep in mind, Boston's Boston's like seven and a half up right now in the Yankees. Their, their biggest problem is like Tampa Bay is right there alongside with them. Tampa Bay just a half game back. So, um, and Boston also like they, they, they are kind of set up. They're also, don't forget Chris Sale. They're uh, you know, excellent starting pitcher um, should be, they do expect him back. I believe at some point, maybe in September. So um, that could be their big kind of pseudo trade line, trade deadline addition. Um, but everybody, you know, all the teams that are kind of in play 
were so active, like everybody was active seemingly. So, yeah. um, out, you know, outside of maybe Philadelphia and Atlanta, I thought everybody else kind of, you know, did something to make them better. So you did like to see that. I do want to say though, obviously, when you talk about all these teams that are buying, uh, there's teams on the other side of that who are just like punting, you know, completely on the season. And I was, you know, I was kind of surprised. You know, I know the uh, I know the Chicago Cubs are kind of, you know, they've they've lost four straight right now. They're five games out of five hundred, but it seems like they kind of still you feel like they have the talent to like make a little bit of a run and they chose not to They and that was a complete fire sale you talk about it's now you look back at that world series team that i believe it was 2016 that they won the world series and uh that that team's that team's done now like anthony rizzo gone javi baez gone chris bryant that's your first baseman your third baseman your shortstop and then you know other key contributors from this you know from this season you know outfielders jock peterson and jake marisnik gone and then two big bullpen arms and Craig Kimmer, uh, Ryan Tapera, they're both gone. And in the Nationals, that's another team. They just won the World Series in 2019. Another big fire sale there. I talked about uh, Trey Turner and Max Scherzer, but also Kyle Schwarber, Josh Harrison, Jan Gomes, John Lester, Brad Hand, Daniel Hudson. That's 15 guys from two teams who um, have been highly relevant over the past, you know, five to six seasons. So um, that was almost even more than you know all the teams that were kind of in like just you know trading four players the cubs and nationals completely stood out to me because you know those are teams like you know on their face pretty talented teams who should be competing a little bit better than they are now and at the trading deadline they said nope we're done get them all out of here